Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through Alpha 1 Antitrypsin Deficiency. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash AAT Deficiency or in the Gastroenterology section of the second edition of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. And you can find flashcards and questions to train your knowledge on this content and help you remember it for longer at members.zerotofinals.com. So let's jump straight in. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is a genetic condition caused by low levels of alpha-1 antitrypsin. Two main organs are affected in patients with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. They develop chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and bronchiectasis in the lungs, typically after age 30, and dysfunction, fibrosis and cirrhosis of the liver. And the presence of liver disease depends on the specific genotype, which we'll talk about in more detail shortly. So let's go through the pathophysiology. The serpin A1 gene coding for alpha-1 antitrypsin is found on chromosome 14. The gene has many potential variations, each with different effects on the quantity and functionality of alpha-1 antitrypsin. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is inherited in an autosomal co-dominant pattern. Co-dominant refers to when both gene copies are expressed and contribute to the outcome. Neither copy is dominant or recessive over the other. The disease severity results from the combination of both copies of the gene. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is a protease inhibitor. One critical protease enzyme is neutrophil elastase. This enzyme, which is secreted by neutrophils, digests elastin, and this is a process called elastolysis. Elastin is a protein found in connective tissue that helps keep the tissues flexible. Alpha-1 antitrypsin offers protection to the connective tissues by inhibiting the action of the neutrophil elastase enzyme. In the lungs, the lack of a normal functioning alpha-1 antitrypsin protein leads to excess protease enzymes attacking the connective tissues. Destruction of the elastic tissue in the lungs leads to bronchiectasis and emphysema. Smoking dramatically accelerates this process. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is produced in the liver. In specific genotypes of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, an abnormal mutant version of the protein is made that gets trapped and builds up inside the liver cells, or the hepatocytes. These mutant proteins are toxic to the hepatocytes, causing inflammation in the liver. Over time, this progresses to fibrosis, or scarring, liver cirrhosis, and potentially hepatocellular carcinoma, or liver cancer. Liver pathology can occur at any age, including childhood. Less commonly, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency can be associated with paniculitis, which are tender skin nodules caused by inflammation of the subcutaneous fat, or the fat under the skin, and granulomatosis with polyangitis, which is a small and medium vessel vasculitis. Let's talk about the diagnosis. The diagnosis is based on the presence of low serum concentrations of alpha-1 antitrypsin and testing the alpha-1 antitrypsin is the screening test as well as genetic testing. Lung damage can be assessed with a chest x-ray, high-resolution CT thorax and pulmonary function tests. A liver biopsy shows periodic acid shift positive staining globules inside the hepatocytes, 
which are resistant to diastase treatment. These acid shift positive staining globules represent a buildup of the mutant proteins inside the liver cells. Finally, let's talk about management. Management involves stopping smoking, as smoking dramatically accelerates the progression of the lung disease. Symptomatic management, for example, standard treatment of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or the lung disease. Organ transplant for end stage liver or lung disease. Monitoring for complications, for example, hepatocellular carcinoma and screening of family members. Giving an infusion of alpha-1 antitrypsin to boost the levels is possible, but there is doubt about the clinical benefit and the cost. The NICE guidelines on COPD updated in 2019 recommend against using replacement alpha-1 antitrypsin. Research has consistently shown that testing yourself after learning a topic has a powerful effect on how long you retain that information. This is known as the testing effect. Studying and then testing yourself results in longer lasting and stronger recall on that information when tested at a later date, even when compared with additional study sessions. If you're preparing for a medical exam and you're not regularly testing your knowledge and practicing your recall, you're failing to maximise your potential. The Zero to Finals member site contains flashcards, short answer questions, multiple choice questions and extended matching questions that are purpose-built to supplement the Zero to Finals content, helping you build your internal database of knowledge and take advantage of the powerful testing effect. If you like the Zero to Finals notes, books, videos and podcasts, then you'll love the member's site.